Well, thank you, Pastor, for having me out today. Let me share this word with you. And you're doing a great job with the Holy Spirit teaching on that. On the teaching. We're going to be talking about some stuff, going over some same stuff that he did, and maybe just add to it, build on the foundation a little bit. John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief comes not, but will steal, kill, to destroy. But I have done with you may have life, and that more abundantly. This page right here, King David Version, of course. I didn't get one of those other ones, but I like the translation better. Anyway. <clears throat> the title of this message is Three. Three. That's it. Because I think some years ago, God gave me a message, and He put it in the Spirit about how He ministers to us in three stages. For example, Christ is in the grave for many days. How many days did he tell Peter to feed the sheep? How many times did Peter, okay. Peter deny Christ? Three, once from the body, once from the soul, once from the spirit. The faith of the love come down by fear, doubt, and unbelief. Okay? So anyway, well, use that premise. Also, what first the thief does? It says he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And we look at it like the way the Lord spoke to me. It's like he builds a house of destruction. And what I'm saying is he builds a house of destruction. You may have ever any construction work. Okay? Well, the three, as far as I'm concerned, I have to GC a lot, general contract a lot of uh, laundry and stuff. First thing is lay foundations. They like the experience to do Lay foundation. Then after the foundation, you have to frame on that foundation. Then you finish it. The three F's of building is foundation, frame, and finish. Amen? So we're going to look at this different way here today. We're going to have some destruction, which Satan does. First thing he wants to do is he wants to steal from us. Foundation of, of all destruction. It's still one. It's still our still home, still our family, still our dream, still our health, still our finances. But we can steal as we're supposed to do. Amen? So you can do that. You can do that enough. And all kind of coordinates do because fear not unbelief. That's the first stage. Fear is the first stage of unbelief. Love you think hate is the opposite of love. It's not. Unbelief is the opposite of love. So let's go ahead with this. Foundation is to steal from us. Because if he can do that, he can then frame the foundation of the house of destruction. Okay? By what? Killing. And the word that kill, King James had a loose translation, I'll be honest with you. It really means to blow smoke or a dry by fire. What do I mean? So, you ever say that blue smoke to anybody here? I don't know if you have as many a lot. Uh, first of all, I don't know why, but no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, I wish I hadn't said that. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm just kidding. The same doesn't close a lot of smoke. He, he, he has no more power than what we're giving, amen? That's it. He tries to close smoke. Nothing he tries to do, he does try to kill our vision. Several of us have had a vision that God gave us. Maybe not necessarily um, a worldwide ministry, but maybe so. How about being the best body shop in town, the best grocery store in town, the best insurance agent, whatever? And he gets us the vision, and he said, I'm going to give you this a long time ago. I'm just going to start to fulfill it. And 40 years ago, it's a long time. So if he can kill that dream or avoid it, what he's going to do is, he says, he's going to appear the house of destruction. Now, I'm going to say something here, and this is not to judge anybody. Seven years ago, and I think some of you can remember, Jim Baker had a ministry that, that he was going to do. Uh, from here to USA, I don't know that. And, well, send him in the camp. And before you go and knock Jim Baker, I, I never cared to produce it, but it didn't matter. I mean, he has got a lot more, more he had a lot more closer to his vision than I had mine. Here to USA was almost built, and all this stuff happened. But what happened, actually, was destruction. So he had stolen Jim Baker and Terry Bay. And he was able to build a foundation of that and finish work. He destroyed it. And Jim Baker left the place, the field position was crazy. Everybody's dead now. It's destruction now. Destruction is between destruction and death. Death can affect you. Destruction is where the whole body of Christ takes a black eye and it did. Well, if y'all remember that, they had a feeding frenzy in the media. I'm not, I'm not blaming 
Jim Jim Nightgown, he said, if, if we live in a glass half full, we have this. Amen? I'm just saying that. That's the answer that we can get. We do it through this beauty and this joy. Now, I've uh, got all the bad stuff out of us, and good stuff. Jesus said, I'm going to have life and work and have a little bit. Here was just exist. There are more life between Monday and for five days and have two days a week and have fun. He wants to have fun every day a week and a month and a week and a day and a second. Abundant life. Abundant means overflow. Now, well, Jay, if, if the house of destruction has three stages, well, God, why? How can we live in it? And Isaiah chapter 43. I really appreciate that back here, but he's on top of it, you know what I'm saying? I can read this all down in the Bible, too. I appreciate that. Even everyone that is called on my name, for I have created him for my glory. I formed him, yea, I made him. There's a whole foundation, the whole DNA of spirituality, of life itself. Creation, stage one. Formation, stage two. And the session, stage three. All that right there. Well, let's look at this. I'm going to see something physical here to bring about something spiritual. Physically speaking, let's listen to the perfect case scenario. I've given all of this. Let's look at the perfect case scenario. Perfect case scenario, Christian man wanting to get married. One of them decides that, and, and listen to this, creation has three stages too. The first stage of creation, you look in Genesis, is to have an idea. And this is what we call business a little bit, okay? Not really, but I don't think it's longer than you say. But we are going to get back to this in just a second. The first stage of creation is to have an idea. God had an idea, he will bring man. Second stage of creation, agreement, giving him a dream. God says in his office, let us, as we do all that, let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness, as I appear. And it does. All of a sudden, I'm going to do it. You've got to agree with me. Now, I'm going to agree with you. Next stage of creation is taking corresponding action. It's all three stages. Okay? Well, Christian and Mormon get together. I said, I'm ready. Why don't you have an idea? Well, I want to have a baby. Let's have a baby. Okay, we can agree with you. They take corresponding action. Now, the next thing that happens is it passes from the foundation stage of the life, which is creation. And then it goes from the foundation stage to the framing stage of life. It's a formation. Now, the doctors call it a trimester. Is that right, Pastor? You just experienced that? Trimester. Three semesters. I'm going to rest here, but it's three of them. Okay? Now, during that stage, this baby is going to form a body, neck, head, arms, legs, hands, feet, fingers, toes. And nine minutes later, it gets what? Approximately. I'm going to pass a little bit over, but you know. Approximately nine months later, when your baby born, it's been made, it's been manifest, the world can see it. Now, here's the sad part of this one. They're trying to get past the sin now that, that a baby had much in the board of baby. It's terrible. This is just terrible. The only difference is that the world can see it when it's born and it's murdered. It's not two weeks before. I don't understand that. Baby's already fine. So, Hold on a second. I'm not advertising for Sam's, but that pretty well. Okay. So, the formation stage, okay, we have the foundation stage of creation. The formation stage has three masters, which is three stages. Then we go to life itself, manifestation. Life is manifest. Now, let's say some are something here. What about healing? Healing is a life process, amen? Is healing a life process? Amen. So, one of the injustices that a lot, not a lot, but a lot of people are interested in is they give people, especially new Christians, a microwave Christianity without them being healthy. You understand know what I'm saying? A microwave Christianity. What it means is, I want it, I want that. You can turn it on to a lot of the channels and all the cities. Send your CD and give me your money. Send your CD and give me your money. I hate that. 
But the pencil is there. The pencil is there. But it makes people follow Jesus with the issues of love. It's not what you do. It's your own blessing. You might even blame you for Christ. Maturity is this. Maturity is not doing with miracles. Miracles are for the, the immature. Blessings are for the mature. It's better to walk in the divine health or it's better to be healed. It's a difference. Now, whenever we look at um, the third stage of being manifested, and we're talking about healing, let's look at the person this way. In the first start from what? Remember, I was looking at was in a pop quiz and what creation is? What's the first stage of creation? Anybody remember? What? Have an idea. How will we heal? Sarah raised her hand. You're not coming down with Okay? Next stage of creation is what? We didn't agree with James chapter 5 says, Brother, is there any stick among you? And call for the elders, the elders of the church. And pray over you. And only him at all. Prayer of faith shall save the sick and has his sins to be forgiven. You know what it says? You get to meet him. Third stage, stay course by the action. First thing you gotta do is you gotta get up. You gotta pray. You gotta get with the elders and let them pray over you. Listen, here's something that, that, that the Lord Robert showed me one time. <clears throat> if you're sick, it says, call for those of the church, elders of the church, let them pray over you, let them pray over you, let them pray over you. One of the hardest things to do for people is to accept things, or for some people. It's hard for me to accept things. I mean, you know, to, for somebody to give me something, I don't know why, I, just, I, just, I love it, you know, when you get something, it's, it's, but I love to give a lot more than I do to get. And, but it's hard for some people because we have so little pride. But in healing, the Bible says, first of all, I'm going to be healed. Say, in agreement, James chapter 5, tells us in the Word of God, how to do that. First thing is, take first one action. Your action is just to get up and go to the church and pray with you. And don't you know, this is a very faithful, safe son. Oh, no, 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 it says, it says, shall say the same. They have the sins that they forgive. They'll recover. That's what the Bible says. Now, here's the, here's the catch. We can either believe that there's another sermon that sometimes don't the difference between truth and reality. But um, we can choose to believe that, that God is and He is a rewarder of those who we seek Him. We can choose to believe the Word, or we can choose not to. Because if we've done everything we're supposed to do, if we have said and had the idea I want to heal, and we have had the agreement of the elders, then, of course, my reaction is to let the elders around you because sometimes if you're sick, you're weak and you're severe, that's okay. As long as we're in this life, we're going to have times when we're going to be weak in certain areas, maybe. The spot is fine, I can say. The spot is going to go away with it. Okay? Sometimes we're going to be weak. In that area, there's an area that you're weak in, say, finances, say, health, say, mentally, say, physical, moral, whatever, spiritual. There's an area in your life that you're sick. I don't want to call the master here because I don't know who the elders are. But uh, if there's an area that you're sick in today, it can be even more people. We'll pray for you. Uh, all of us in a certain area of prayer, I would love to pray with you. It's a prayer of faith shall say the same. Here's the thing. The Bible says over in Mark chapter 4, I think it is. It's talking about the parable of the sower. It says immediately. It doesn't say after a while or whatever. Immediately, if the thief comes to take it away, is that? Yeah, immediately. There's that word. And takes away the word that was sown in your heart. It's just possible to take the word out of your heart. I don't say it is. Immediately. Now, here's how he does it. Three ways. Number one, he tries to take it away by your emotions. I don't feel healed. You're not healed. You don't feel healed. Your symptoms. You might still, I mean, you might go in and, and be sick and get in there and you might not feel any different. I don't know when she's pregnant and first pregnant. Do you see any results of that? I mean, did she start blowing and blowing out all, all of a sudden? I don't think so. It takes a while before she knows. About a farmer, if you sit there and see the guy and you go, it's not working. It's not working. 
that's what we're teaching to Christians today in some of the places that I know. It's instantaneous stuff. I'm not a believer that there's sometimes when our healing is instantaneous, it's called a miracle of healing. But I think God more wants us nowadays to have a walk with Him. A walk with Him. He wants to do. If you look before Adam uh, fell, God had built you with that. That's what He wanted all along. That's what He created you for His glory. That's all He wants to us now. We've been restored through Christ. Amen. That's what He wants. That's it. What He wants want to love us. Oh. So, healing is a life process. Have the idea, agree, and of course, call the nation. Don't let your emotions be healed. If you're healed, the Lord says you're healed, stand on that. Don't stand on your emotions. Don't stand on your what you feel. Don't stand on your symptoms. And don't stand on, especially don't stand on what other people say. The first thing that they're doing, people do, when the doctor saying, I want to tell you, I want to share something with you all, but. That's the first time I've last time ever hear me say it. I'm fighting with it. Do you know what? The Lord has healed me of it and will be manifest. Because I've already agreed. I've already said, I want to heal. I've already agreed. I've already prayed. And I think, of course, my action. I'm not leaving my emotions. I'm not leaving my symptoms. I'm leaving the Word of God. See, if you need a I'm going to be healed. Right? And it's going to happen. Because God said it. I'm leaving God over my emotions. I'm leaving over my, my symptoms. Folks. The platform is for pastors. I think so is for collective preaching today. Pastors, the message that goes along with the Holy Spirit, because the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, so many threes, the Trinity. Uh, but think about this and let the seed grow in you for whatever you need to do. Okay. Amen. Why don't you stand with us at that? Let's just take on the two the words we presented. Maybe somebody needs to be prayed for. Amen. Yeah. Maybe you've been prayed for before. That's okay. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. Sometimes we just need more revelation. More revelation. And this is Spirit. As we're sharing, as He's sharing, the Spirit is speaking to us and revealing things to us. You know, that's what Jesus said He would do. And uh, sometimes when you get that fresh new revelation, that might be the one thing that you needed to be able to. It's the faith that you're needing to receive that miracle. And that's why I don't have a problem with people over and over again. Because sometimes they just haven't made it to that revelation yet. And I believe that the prayer uh, kind of healed it spontaneously. But also sometimes we need to get to that place. And so maybe that's what's happening right now. Maybe there's some that revelation. But I think he he asked the Lord one time why, why he had God was healing and he, he had faith. And the Lord said, you have faith as far as you know. And so the more you know, the more you have faith. That's right, according to your faith, Jesus said. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the Word. The Word is the seed of the Lord. And the more we hear it, the more it's being planted, the more it's being watered and nurtured. And then it produces and manifests. So we just have to keep hearing, keep hearing. Faith grows and it develops. And, and then your faith contacts that anointing of God, that power that you, you know, the woman pushed through the crowd. Have faith. Your faith touch. The healing power of Jesus. The healing power is there. He didn't do anything. He didn't say anything. He was right there, available to anybody in that space. But one person got it. One. She had heard that Jesus was a healer. The scripture says she came and she said to herself, if I just touch his karma, I'll be healed. So how did she get that idea? She heard about it. It produced in her that idea that caused her to be to develop faith for it. And then Jesus said to her, right? He said, because of your faith, the faith connected her to that healing power. Amen. And it'll work in healing, in miracles of healing, it'll work in any area that we have a need. Right? Any area. No matter what it is. All the same. Amen. Why don't we just do this? If you, you have a need, why don't you come up and um, let's, let's, we want to pray with you. We're laying hands on you. 
and uh, we've got your name in from Miracle, whatever it is. Anyone come? Thank you. 